Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. Welcome. So excited to have you here today. If you are not watching this on YouTube, this is one you're going to really want to go look at on YouTube because my guest today, Colleen Kohanek, is all in her brilliance. Um, she has the best, brightest brand that is on the market today. And especially if you're a baby boomer, you're going to love it. Um, Colleen Kohanek helps women from the typewriter generation. How much do you love that? I totally love the typewriter generation uh, that she came up with. She, so she helps women like me from the typewriter generation become successful and confident laptop entrepreneurs, helping them leverage their decades of life experience and learning to create a meaningful and let's underline that. That is a really important part of this. And we're going to talk about that today. Meaningful and yes, revenue generating also business. Welcome, Colleen. Oh my gosh, Kathy. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. I always love chatting with you. Uh, same right back at you. And one of these days, I think we need to get together so that you can help me learn how to dress because you always look so put together and so beautiful. And I'm always so jealous. Oh my gosh, you're sweet. I just, I do, I love color. So, and I, I wear it every day. I always have to have color. And it I, looks so good on you. It looks so very, very good on you. And oh, it, it, do you just stand out everywhere you go? Do people comment on whatever you're wearing, your glasses or whatever else you're they wearing? Definitely you have some amazing glasses. Shoes. Yeah. Yeah, they definitely mm -hmm. comment. And the glasses were, the red glasses kind of happened, not by mistake, but I've always, I mean, since my early 40s, I've needed readers and, you know, more and more like more powerful ones. And I've always worn colorful glasses. But at some point, people were like, oh, you're the lady with the red glasses. They would just happen to see me. So now mm -hmm. I just exclusively wear the red ones. But yeah, <laughs> any color. I like color. And it always kind of cracks me up or makes me a little sad. People are like, I love your glasses. I could never wear them. I'm like, why not? Why not? Go get exactly. Red why not? Them. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. It doesn't I'm with you. Yeah. Yeah. So like you, I am now wearing what cheaters. <laughs> Have you ever, I went into, uh, uh, Walgreens and, uh, this youngster, you know, he was probably 21 at the checkout register. I said, where are your cheaters? And he goes, are what? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, readers. And yeah. he goes, glasses. And I said, yes. <laughs> but now there are so many companies online oh, that have such brilliant. awesome looking yeah. readers that I, I, I bet I have, um, and just right here by me, I mean, I bet I have 20 different Easy. ones. Yeah. Yep. Because totally. they're so inexpensive and they're so fun. Yeah. And I want them all over the house. So they're always at hand. Of yes. course, they always wind up in a one pile somewhere, but yeah. Yeah. And my, I went to the doctor and she's like, you really need like progressive lenses. Cause your eyes are, you know, wonky. So I tried progressive lenses. I couldn't get used to them. I'm like, I'm going back to readers and I just will not be able to see the road sign. It's okay. <laughs> I don't even know what progressive readers are. Progressive, what are they? No, progressives are glasses like where the top part is like like readers and then the bottom part is maybe like long distance. But as, oh. the, as my eye doctor said, you have to really want to wear them and they're lineless. They're not like the old fashioned bifocals, you know, have the big line. Right. There's no line, but it messes with your brain. And so I was like nauseous for four days and I'm like, I give up. I just, and she's like, you have to really want it like for your body to get used to it. I'm like, I don't want it that bad. <laughs> I don't, I don't want it. I have, mo I have motion sickness naturally. Um, mm. really bad anyway. I mean, yeah. so glasses like that, I would never be able no, to no. do. You'd be and like falling off your floor. Yeah. That's how I was. I was like falling off my floor. It was like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It was no no, good. I'm unbalanced most days. So <laughs> <laughs> That wouldn't be good without them. Yeah, yeah it would be, be a nightmare. Yeah. Be a nightmare. Yeah. 
So Colleen, I know that we have just so much in common because we both have, um, as you so brilliantly put it, that typewriter generation as our target market. You and I are both that typewriter generation. In fact, I was, what was I watching? Oh, canine. Do you remember that old um, movie yes. canine? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, my husband and I were, it's from the 1980s. My husband and I were watching it and they showed a desk And they had the IBM Selectric there. And I I got so nostalgic and I was like, oh, I want to touch it. Yeah. Yeah. See that ball flipping around again. Yeah. (laughs) And those were the fancy ones when you got the electric one with the ball. Like we would race into typing class to grab the few fancy ones they had. Everybody else was stuck (laughs) with the old ones. Yeah. (laughs) I totally hear you. I thought I had died and gone to heaven when at my job I got. I got my own IBM Selectric. Yeah, it was awesome. fancy one. Yeah. It was awesome. One. Yeah. <laughs> so I know that you are very devoted, as am I, to supporting women who are uh, from our generation. And we have unique uh, situations, right? We have had a lot of experience in our lives. So what have you discovered as you have been working with the typewriter generation, what have you discovered are some of their challenges that you're helping them overcome in creating their businesses? Oh, gosh, Um, there's a few, actually. I mean, the first challenge is we don't see ourselves out there in society in the online space. It's always the, you know, 30 under 30, the top 30 entrepreneurs under the age of 30 and things like that. So we don't necessarily see ourselves out there, which is interesting because um, statistics out of the Kaufman Institute, and I always quote these statistics wrong, so don't take my numbers like for, you know, for real, but they're very impressive anyhow, even if I get them wrong, is like women over the age of 55 are like 40% more likely to start a successful online business than a 30 something. And so, but yes, I saw that stat. I saw that stat. I love that stat. And it's true. It's true. And the reality is there, but it's like the world hasn't caught up with that yet. And society isn't showing that yet. So that's one challenge for sure is we don't see ourselves out there. So we question if we belong there, uh, which is total BS. You totally do. And the other biggest challenge I find is the tech stuff, because obviously online business by nature, there is a lot of tech. And the challenge that I find is interesting that my students often kind of trip over is they don't even try. Like, it's not like they've tried and and it didn't work is they just have this automatic barrier that it's too much tech for me without even really knowing what's involved. Because I'm a huge, huge supporter of outsource, hire it done, all of those things, Uh, you know, know the basics kind of thing. But that's like the biggest challenge, I think, is they stop before they even start because the tech feels scary to them. Um, And I came out of my corporate career, um, educational technology, where we worked obviously in a lot of training. And there's a term for us over, you know, over 50s is we are digital immigrants, meaning technology came to us Mm -hmm. during our lives versus the younger folks who are digital natives. And I always describe the difference Mm -hmm. as like, you know, kids today are born like teething on their mom's iPad. We were born teething on our mom's like filthy car keys, like here, take the keys and put them in your mouth. Kind of. <laughs> That's thing. exactly right. Yeah. So it's a difference. So technology came to us during our lives and we approach it very differently than the younger folks, because throughout our lives, anything we did had consequences. Like I always talk about the typewriter. Like once you put that piece of paper in there and started typing, you were committed. Like you were committed. There was no copy, paste, delete, clone, you know, all of those templates, things like that. So we have just kind of, I think, embedded in our psyche that there are consequences to pushing buttons and doing things, even though there really aren't anymore with technology, but it's just kind of in our DNA. So kind of getting over that sometimes is a hurdle. Mm -hmm. It's totally, totally, you know, overcomable, of course. But I think sometimes that mindset thing is there. 
Uh, and society, mm -hmm. of course, plays on it. Like they treat us like we're idiots that can't operate a phone, like the jitterbug <laughs> phone. Big numbers. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh, you know, grandma can't operate the phone. And so they kind of like just perpetuate that myth. And so I, you know, I get, I get kind of tough love with my students. I'm like, it is your responsibility to learn technology, basic tech skills. It's nobody else's responsibility to make sure you learn it. It's your responsibility. So when people push back on it, I'm like, you learned how to operate a car and your ancestors didn't have a car. So what is the difference? Like, what's the difference? <laughs> and you, know, you can get in a whole lot more trouble driving a car than you can driving totally, a computer. <laughs> totally. But when they push back, I know it's like coming from a place of fear or, you know, they're just yes. not familiar or they don't know, but I'm like, it's your responsibility. Like the world moves forward without you or not. And so you need to have these skills and they can make your life a lot easier, a lot easier for sure. Yes. So those are like the two biggest challenges, I think, is we're not portrayed as being entrepreneurs and the, the tech myth is a big stumbling block, even though it doesn't have to be. Those are, I'd say, yeah. the two biggest challenges. Yeah, yeah. I, I totally agree with you. And if you, uh, so many of people like you're talking about um, will keep that myth in their head and they will truly believe and i'm one of them that i i am incapable of learning anything tech i am incapable of it yeah so when you encounter someone like that how do you help them overcome that mindset because that is really an important mindset to overcome yeah i mean to be perfectly honest 100 transparent i've moved from uh trying to help people who refuse to be helped because it's, it's like anything in life, Good if you point. don't want to be helped, you're not going to be helped. They're not coachable. They're you're not, not coachable. coachable. Move on. Yeah, they're not coachable. So I kind of move on and I've changed my messaging a lot. Um, and so what I get now in my world um, are more people who have, they have far more tech skills than they realize. But a lot of them come with um, like job specific tech skills. Like maybe they were a nurse and they worked like with the, you know, hospital system kind of thing. And so they're, mm -hmm. you know, they're good with that, or, you know, they've worked mm -hmm. with like a job specific system. And when mm -hmm. it comes to right. basic skills, you know, like Microsoft office or Google drive or things like that, they're not familiar with mm -hmm. it, but because they have come with some tech knowledge where there's almost like conceptual understanding and a sense of how things work on the back end, then it's much easier to, yeah. coach them and show them and say, you already know, in theory, you know, how the stuff works or, you know, kind of right. how it works or what it does. Um, mm -hmm. But one thing I do that they appreciate is when I say I'm step by step, I am literal step by step. Like if I do a, a tutorial, <laughs> like how to set up a, some type of funnel, like a lead magnet funnel, you know, like go to this page, click this button. This is what you'll see. And other people say they're step by step, which is actually one of the reasons I started my business, but they're not really step by step. They assume like a lot of knowledge in between. Right. And you're like, wait, right. what? What button? What button? I don't see the button. Where's the right. like, where's the goddamn button? Like, where's the button? So I am literal step by step, like with tutorials and video. So it's like you can't get lost kind of thing. And I know my mm -hmm. people appreciate mm -hmm. that because they're already a little mm -hmm. nervous about things. Um, so mm -hmm. that definitely yeah. helps. That definitely helps them get yeah fast. and colleen i totally agree with you um th that is also how my program is because when i was taking training before i started my own program i would take training and they would say everything is going to be provided for you and then they would say okay so now you're going to write an email and then you're going to do this and i'm like wait what goes in that email mm -hmm. how do i write the email I, I don't know what i don't know what to put in the email right yeah or yeah. when do you send the email you know uh, when do you send the second email is there more than one email right so yeah. i give me actual steps yeah just like you're talking about yeah um so i so value that you do that and by the way colleen i just had this experience the other day my mistake i thought i was going to do facebook live where i was going to interview somebody on facebook live okay and i read the instructions on facebook itself how to do this. And I'm like, I've got it, but I didn't practice it. 
Okay. My mistake. I didn't practice. Get on there. The other person is waiting for me. The button <laughs> that Facebook said to press was nowhere to be found. Nowhere. The GD <laughs> button wasn't there. I get it. Yeah. 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 So, so, you know, there's always an alternative. So I'm like, all right, we're not going to do Facebook live. We're going to go interview on zoom and we're going to post that video on yeah. Facebook. So that's what I did right then. Cause I had the person waiting for me, but that taught me actually test it before you yeah. do it. Because no matter how current, like it was actual Facebook's instructions, which I thought would be current. They're not because things change that fast. They change that fast. And I'm glad you brought this up because this is something my audience talks about a lot. Like, I hate social media. It's always changing. And I'm like, yes, that is the nature of technology and social media today. And it's our responsibility to figure it out. And I'm like, I guarantee once you figure it out, if it changes tomorrow, you have far more knowledge to bring to like figuring out the new button or whatever. But I'm like, that's just mm -hmm. the nature of the beast today. Like things change quickly. That's why they don't have user manuals or directions. Everybody's like, where's the use? Like, where are the directions? And like, no, because it, they're obsolete before it's printed. Like kind of that's thing. right. That's There's right. no directions. So, oh my gosh, my, you have just described my husband. He is still so focused on that user manual. He will get online. He has figured out how to get online and find the user manual. Or if he can't find it himself, he'll call and get somebody to email him the user manual. And then he uses up all our printing. Prints it out all 372 pages. Out. Yep. Yes. yep. And it's super thick. And then it and he it's goes obsolete. to use it. That's right. He goes <laughs> to use it and he's like, well, this isn't right. Yeah. They're obsolete before they before they because yeah. people do that all the time. Like, oh, can you do like a tutorial on such and such? I'm like, no, because mm -hmm. by tomorrow it's different. <laughs> you That's just right. have to like just figure it Google out. Google it. Go. Google, Google it and look at the date. That's what I always do. I always Google how to, and then I look at the date of when whatever the instructions were. Because if it's yeah. last year, it's out of date. Oh, pro tip. I, I, how do you such and such and put 2021 in the search bar? It'll help bring the newer ones up. But yes. it is true. I um I even have a section in my my program that um people go through how to ask a better question and how to help yourself. Because it's like Ooh, a lot of times love that. we don't even really know what to search for kind of thing. You know, like if it's uh -huh. like, oh, I right. say it's like trying to look up a word in the dictionary that you don't know how to spell. <laughs> like, right. Look it up because if I knew how right. to spell it, right. But I'm like, it's kind of the same thing with tech. You do have to start, you know, I'm like, you at least have to start, like, how do I, and you do have to think about maybe how to describe it, but I'm like, eventually you will get there. You, you will get there eventually for sure. Right. But, and Google's really good about helping you get there. Yeah. Yeah. It really I is. Know what we're it, Yes, because like I'll Google something that I'm just like you're talking about. I'll Google it in that way and I'll put 2021 on there and then there'll be other words that come up. And I'm like, oh, this is exactly yeah. what I was really wanting, not this other word. But it, it, it really does help you. So it's, even if you oh, don't totally know right. exactly what to Google, just start and then and you'll learn as you yeah. go. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's always yeah. great, always and, good to have a tech guy in your pocket, <laughs> like somebody that you have oh, yeah. like, that you can call and say, this is broken or this isn't working. I need help. Always, always, mm -hmm. always a good, mm -hmm. good, good mm -hmm. thing. <laughs> so what do you think about this? I, because this is my true confession, um, which is because I've always been a little technophobic um, and you know, I, my business has grown to the point where I can hire everything done, which, oh, yay, I love that. Um, <laughs> but there are still some things I need to do on my own, for example, running my own computer um, and my own phone. So one of the things that I have done um, is, you know, there's those early adapters, like there's those bleeding edge adapters who get in on the earliest thing. Then there's the early adapters. And I'm like the latest adapter. Like I will wait until, you know, uh, let's see, we are no longer going to be updating this yeah, program. This you must switch. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then I'm yeah. like, okay, I'll do it. 
What do you think about that? Is that a bad strategy? Should we be adopting a little bit earlier than that? You know, instead of the bleeding early edge, I'm the bleeding last leg. I'll tell you, I'm a fan of getting a tool, learning it and using it. Don't Ooh, get I love fancy that. later, get fancy later. Like just because, you know, the whole like FOMO thing and, you know, every, you'll go online and somebody says, oh no, this is the absolute best tool. And suddenly you feel like you yes. need a different tool. Yes. Uh, in my program, it's like pick a tool, stay with the tool, learn the tool, grow with the tool. And then when you get to, when your business gets to a point that that tool no longer supports what you're doing, then you can look at other tools but for now pick it stay with it it doesn't because there is no perfect tool they all have limitations oh there is no perfect tool that is for sure and quite frankly i just had this experience if you try to do something that is too complicated or too sophisticated for where you need to be right now it can be more of a stressor a headache and you know lost money quite frankly i just tried this you overpay you overpay for something you don't even need yeah, you don't need it. And just the stressor, like I'd go into this tool, I'd be like, oh my God, where is everything? How like it was just a stressor when I already had a tool that I knew how to use, which I'm back to that. So I got the FOMO out of my system, but it took a good two months out of my life you know, before. So now it's like yeah. just, you know, pick a tool, use it, learn right. it. And when you right. outgrow it, then you'll be ready for a different tool anyhow by then. But don't just right. start you know, you don't need the latest smartphone. Like you don't have to stand in line and camp out at the Apple store (laughs) for the new iPhone. Oh, thank goodness. Cause I've never done that. No, I I haven't I guarantee whatever's new about it is not all that, you know, all that Shazam. So that's what I think about that. I think pick something, you know, do your due diligence, do your research, pick something, stay with it, grow with it, learn it, get comfortable with it. Your life will be easier. Yeah. (sighs) You have yeah. just validated my whole entire existence. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Cause that is how I, I have my cars forever. I have my computers forever. I have my phones forever. Yep. <laughs> I drive my car. In fact, I just got a new car six months ago and my other car was a 2006. And the only reason I got rid of it, it had 140,000 miles on it was just stuff started breaking and I didn't trust it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. My laptop is like six years old, which is archaic and in the computer world. I, oh, thank you for sharing that with me, mine. And I think you and I were actually, we're in a mastermind together. And I think you and I were actually commenting on this thread the other day about getting a new computer because mine is seven years old. I took it into the computer shop at Christmas time, which is, you know, like quite a while ago now and had it like worked on. And they Mm -hmm. literally said, so your computer is so old that we can't get parts for it. And we're trying to find used parts. And there are a couple of things we can't get. Mm-hmm. So we can't make it perfect, but we can make it usable. Yeah. And I was like, oh, usable is fine. Yes, usable I'll go ahead fine. with that. Usable yeah. is fine. And yeah. it's still working, but I did. Oh my gosh, Colleen. I, I don't know if you saw what I posted, but I did make the crazy for Kathy decision. I've never done this before. I'm moving to a Mac. <gasps> I know I may, uh, I will let you know how it goes. I use, I, I had to tell use you a Mac when I was corporate mm-hmm. and they're like, you're going mm-hmm. to love it. It is so intuitive. Yeah. Two years yeah. in, I was like, I was born without <laughs> that intuition because this is making no sense <laughs> at all. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's yeah. about, you're going to have to just force yourself because things yes. work differently and they'll be in a different yes. spot. And you just, if you stick with it, you know, long enough to get familiar where things are, it'll be fine. But yeah. well, and I know how I am. If I have to do it, I will do it. Will. And that's yeah. the point I'm too, because this computer actually is getting the blue screen of death like every other day now. Mine so, is starting to get that too. In fact, I think I posted mm-hmm. like, I might have to get a laptop because this one is starting to be, t- you know, have little temper yeah. tantrums on me. Yeah. 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 My uh, iMac is supposed to be delivered in a week. And I'm like, please, computer gods. <laughs> yeah. Let this one stay and live till then. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I'll keep you posted. Um, yeah. I will tell you, and, and this kind of goes back to what we were talking about with the software. The reason I finally decided to do this is I'm really big on, um, well, let me just say this. In the beginning, when I started my business, I would try to 
um, mix and match, pe- you know, quilt pieces together, pu- put puzzle pieces together. Like I'll have this WordPress site and I'll do a membership plugin and I'll do this plugin and that plugin and I'll have this. And then I'd have like 10 things that wouldn't work together. Yeah. And then um, you, and you know, Kajabi, Kajabi came out and they were like, we're all in one platform. You don't have to put these pieces together. I was like, oh, give me all yeah. in one. Yeah. And yeah. that was a really smart decision I made. Now there's a lot of all in one platforms, but I love the all in one because I don't have to figure out how to make it all work together. Yep. The company does that for me. And yep. that is what the iMac has, uh, the person who convinced me to do this. They convinced me that I wouldn't have to get all these other things like, you know, a separate camera and a separate this and a separate that, yeah. that I could do it all on there. And they offered to train me personally on it. And nice. that was when I went, let me look at the price. Yeah. And when I looked at the price, I was like, oh, that's a really good price. I'm in. Yeah, I'm in. So yeah. I'll let you know how it goes. Yeah, yeah. I think they do a great job with training. And I know people like I don't have Apple products, um, but I know people love their Apple products because oh. everything syncs everywhere. I do that with Google Drive, but they love that everything is just syncing to everything. Well, Colleen, that's the other thing. Other than my computer, everything is Apple. Oh, oh well, gosh. Have, and that makes I have an things. iPhone. Yep. My husband yeah. has a lap, uh, uh, you know, a, a MacBook. Yeah. Um, well, I have an iPad sense. that I use extensively. So literally my computer was the only thing that didn't. Yeah. Work. That makes total yeah. sense. Yeah. And I'm the opposite. So, I have a droid and laptop. So anyhow. And in hindsight, I probably should have gone the droid route because I really love Google. I mean, I'd use Gmail. I use Google drive and all of those things extensively, yeah. but I've already gone and spent way too much money on this other stuff. So yeah. Uh, just like you said, I made that choice. I'm sticking with it. Pick a tool, stay with it. That's exactly right. <laughs> None of them are perfect. Burn it, know it, stay with it. it. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So I want to talk a little bit more about this FOMO idea in a different um, angle of it, which is the older entrepreneurs see all the online hullabaloo about er, get a six figure business, get a seven figure business, get an eight figure business. And they think, oh, that's what I have to do in order to be an entrepreneur. And you think that is a myth. And I would love for you to talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Oh, hey, second. baby. I apologize. <laughs> oh, not a problem. My apologies. That is my my needy dog that barks at air. So we all, we all work from home. So, um, yeah, so I, I do think it's a myth. I mean, in my experience, all of the people that I work with women over 50 who want to start a business, um, obviously some of them do want to start really big businesses and they have really ambitious goals, but the majority of them want to start a business that's going to give them a nice income doing something they love. When I poll them, They'll say, oh my God, like pie in the sky dream. If I would, you know, make 20,000 a month, like that would be like their, um, their version of the eight figure business. And they'd be thrilled as punch with, you know, 10,000 a month, 120,000 a year, holy Toledo. They love that. I mean, that's really where they are. Their fear is that they're going to have to do that hustle, hustle, hustle. Like they see like for the eight figure business. And they're not willing to do that. It's like, I've already done that. I've worked my whole life. I've been an employee my whole life or whatever it is. I've had like the 40, 50, 60 hour work weeks, not happening, not happening anymore. Like I have a student now, she's like, I stop at two because I go hiking at 2.30. So everything that happens has to happen before 2.30. And that's how I think we are. We get to the spot in our lives where it's like, we actually have a life. We have things that we love to do, and we're not willing to compromise on those at all. And so our version of that eight-figure business is really our own. And so I I talk a lot about that. Like, if you don't want an eight-figure business, don't build an eight-figure business. (laughs) If you're happy with like an extra 60,000 or 100,000 a year, knock yourself out. Knock yourself out. For sure. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I have um, women in my program who... uh, you know, you mentioned people having hobbies already. I have a lot of people who volunteer mm-hmm. and, or, and, and they volunteer outside the home, or I'm going to call this volunteering inside your home where you're taking care of your grandchildren. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> unpaid and, labor. Yeah, uh, exactly. And they're unwilling to give that up because yeah. that is what brings meaning to their life. Yes. And the good news, which you're pointing out is you don't have to give that up. You don't, you can, you, you really can have both a business that brings in the level of income you want and all those other things that are in your life. Yeah. Don't Absolutely. let somebody, don't let somebody else's, uh, shoulds yeah make you do something that isn't really right for you because exactly exactly isn't that how we've already lived a lot of our life totally and when you look out there like who is you know promoting that kind of stuff they're much younger people they're in a very different season of their life that doesn't mean you can't be super ambitious and want to make a lot of money at our age of course you can um now one caveat that i do tell my audience like if you want more of a part-time business or super limited business, you need to know upfront in the beginning, you do need to put full time into it to get it going and get it to a place where you have systems in place, you're comfortable running it so that you can then, um, what do they say? The freedom comes from discipline. So you have to get it established and going first and then more of the freedom comes. But even in the beginning, you don't have to be doing like 80 hour weeks. I mean, it's ridiculous, but you need to be consistent and treating it like a business for sure. And, you know, showing up to do the work and get things established 100%. Yeah. Yeah. And I often think about that. And I'd love to hear your thought about this um, time versus money. If you have more time that you can put into something and not as much money, then yeah, you're going to want to work those 30 and 40 hour yeah. weeks. If you have more money than time, then you can put more money into outsourcing, into technology and have more free time. Yeah. It, and move it's, faster. It, yeah. Yeah. You need to look at that and what works best for you. But I think before even that part of what I hear you saying is you need to identify what success means to you. Yes. I, I love that you say that because one thing I do with my students is you need your goals. What are your goals? What are your monetary goals? What are your lifestyle goals? You can't just go into this blind that I want to make some money. Define that. Define that. If it's 5000 a month, 10000 a month, like you need those numbers to work backwards so you can figure out, make decisions, understand what it is you need to do to reach those goals. But we can't be blind with it. But yeah, 100%. 100%. You need to define what success means to you. And then that's what success is. It's not somebody else's version of success. Because yeah. everybody's got their opinion on what success should be for you, don't they? Oh, 100%. 100%. <laughs> you know, for example, when I joined, um, you know, a mastermind that I invested, you know, heavily in, it was a big investment. The, uh, the host or the coach, she's like, what is one of your goals? I'm like, my biggest goal is to never fly coach again. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and I travel a lot. I'm like, so it's going to require some money. It's going to require some money. Yeah. But, you know, people laugh. I'm like, but it is definitely a goal. We need to know why we're doing this as well. For some people, yeah. it's, you know, out of financial need. A lot of us have not saved enough money um, for as long and healthy as we're living. Like we get to retirement, we're like, holy right. hell, I got another 30 years and I'm healthy mm -hmm. and I don't have enough money, mm -hmm. right? So it could be out right. of financial need. It could, most often it's, you know, to make an impact, we really do want to make an impact. We want it to be meaningful and all of those types of things. But you really need to know why you're doing it and what it is you want from this business, for sure, for sure. Do you find that when you ask women what success means to them and what they want out of life, do you find that they often are stumped yep. by that? Yep. Yeah. We talk a lot about that in like in my groups and all that um, there is this feeling I feel I, I always read between the lines. Like we get to a certain point where we're like, it's my turn. Like I've just spent a whole life taking care of a husband, taking care of a house, taking care of the kids, taking care of the PTA, getting the dogs to the vet, you know, buying the birthday presents, all of that stuff. It's my turn. However, it's also really hard to turn that other part off. I see yes. a lot of guilt and shame in my students. Like, and a lot of them, their families push back like, oh, you shouldn't start a business. And it's usually selfish from the family because you know oh she's watching yes. the kids or she's doing this for us and so they don't want to lose that right. 
And I'm like, there is no guilt or shame in wanting to do what you want to do now. You have earned that right, like earned it. For yeah, decades. and not that you even needed to earn it, just being exactly. alive, you have that. Exactly. But if you want to actually, you know, think about that, you've already done your time. Yeah, 100%. And they don't have to, like, like you said, they don't have to earn it. But yeah. if anything, they do. But it is, I think, a mindset issue that's really hard for, you know, a lot of us to get over. And I do think times are changing, so to speak. But we have all come from generations where the, you know, the roles were much more clearly defined and, you know, the women, you know, all of that stuff kind of stuff. Yes. And it's kind of hard to break out of that. But I will mm -hmm. say mm -hmm. when we do break out of it, the result is pretty phenomenal. Like I see, you know, oh, women yeah. doing amazing <laughs> shit, like, oh my gosh, like, it's like somebody's busted out, <laughs> like, and they're, right. you know, they're really soaring with it and they're happy. They're doing something they love. They're getting to make an impact. It's just, you know, it changes their whole life, really it changes yeah. their whole life. It's like incredible. Right. So if you're a woman listening to this right now, who is like, well, I would love to be one of those women who break out, who no longer have that guilt or shame or allow their, uh, you know, family or, you know, whoever is putting that uh, on you to release all of that. Um, are those the kind of things that you can help women overcome? I do. I do a lot of uh, mindset work with my students um, most of the students, by the time they like come into my program, which is um, higher ticket, it's for 12 months and it's, you know, at least $500 a month, depending on your level, they've already made that decision. But like in my free communities, I talk about it a lot. And I think the messy answer is there is no one thing or one exercise or one thing we can do to like suddenly break free. It's messier than that. And so what I always say yes. to people is, you have to make the decision that this is what you want, even mm -hmm. though you're afraid, you're unsure, you're nervous, you're, you know, all of those things, mm -hmm. you have to make the decision mm -hmm. and just start doing because the clarity comes in the doing, the learning comes in the doing, shedding those mindset things comes in the doing. And so it's, mm -hmm. you know, I have so many people that as soon as I'm like past my fear of failure, I'm going to do this. I'm like, oh, I'm never <laughs> going to be past it ever no or then you're going to go into the fear, fear of success yeah then, exactly i'm like you will never <laughs> be beyond it or I, right. I see a lot of people in my world that they oh i'm going to get everything and i'm going to get everything in order we are definitely from the generation oh, i want all i my hear ducks that so in much. a row i'm like yes you'll never have them in a row there's always one little bastard yeah. that has wandered off <laughs> They're never going to be in a row. So you just have to start and it's messy and it's scary. And I always say to people like, oh, you will fail. Like, don't worry about it. You know, let's, let's put your mind at rest. You will, yeah. you will look stupid. The first time you do a Facebook live, you will send an email out that says dear name. Like you will do that. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. But I'm like, why would you expect anything else? Like being brand new to mm -hmm. something. I'm like, you didn't sit in mm -hmm. a car for the first time and just know how to drive it. You know, you killed the clutch, you, you know, all of that stuff. I'm like, just know it mm -hmm. and just expect it. And you just have to kind of do it scared. You just have yeah. to do it scared, yeah. but you have to make the decision. I think just make the decision and go with it. This is what I want. And they don't know how to do, they don't need to know how to do it already. They just need to know it's what they want yeah. and then you can help them. So 100%. can you talk a little bit about, um, somebody listening to this right now saying, okay, I'm loving this Colleen. I want to know more about how she can help me. Yeah. Can yeah. you talk a little bit about that? Totally. Totally. So I start, um, you know, I start folks at the very beginning, like you so see, you've made a decision. You want to have a business. And again, like you may not know what it is, what you want to do, what it looks like. And that's where we start. We always start where you are. And so I help them hone in on what it is they want to do in a business. And the cool thing about the online space is you can pretty much turn anything into a business. I don't care how weird it is. I don't care how, whatever, you can turn it into a business. I can't think of anything weird enough that wouldn't work. Seriously. No, that is how crazy stuff I've seen that people have made a lot of money doing. Oh, it's yeah. Yeah. 
it, it's, yeah, it is crazy. It's crazy. So we start there, like you, you know, hone in on what it is you want to do. I believe in then taking that idea and getting visible very fast on social media. I do not recommend people run out and get a website and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, that's, that's later. We're going to do that later because <laughs> you don't know enough yet about what you're doing. So I 100% like, yeah. support that, Colleen. Yeah. I've tried every different level with people I've worked with. And I will tell you getting that website up early is a mistake because you end up redoing it anyway. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you need on it. You don't have your messaging dialed in. You and yeah. and you don't know. Start what, making some money first. Yeah, you let's don't get know that money what, coming in. Exactly. And I always say, if you're too, um, if you're not willing to like go on Facebook and create a group or a page and start building an audience and selling to them, you're sure the heck not going to be comfortable doing it on a website. Like, so it doesn't matter where you do this. So even and like people don't magically group, find that website either. Once it up, once it's up, it, there aren't just magically people going there. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. So, like in my program, there we do we go through six projects, and they're all project based because they're meant to be. You learn, you do it. You learn, you do it. Versus these programs where you go watch like seven hundred and eighty-two hours of videos, you fill seventeen notebooks with notes, and you haven't done anything. But the first right. thing we do is we clarify what you do and who you do it for, because that's the hardest part of a business. And people always think, well, I'm an accountant. I'm like, that's not what you do. What you do is like the result. It's the benefit. It's like, so anyhow, we go through that. So we get them clear on that. The very next step is you're getting visible. You're going on Facebook. You're having a Facebook page. You're talking about it on your personal profile. You're letting the world know you have this business, like you're you're birthing this business to the world. We, we won't get into websites probably till eight months in. Cause I'm like, you can, you can sell, you don't need a website. You need a landing page, you need email. I mean, so that's where we start at the very beginning. And I keep it essentials only in the beginning, essentials only because people want to jump to these fancy, like, oh, should I do a challenge or should I do this? I'm like, no, just go promote your stuff. I have to get an amazing logo. The very first thing I need to do is no. a logo. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you don't need a logo. You don't need a brand. You don't need a, anything. So it's really bare bones because for me, it's about tiny steps, getting some wins, getting some momentum and getting your business clear and dialed in because, and also one of the things that we do a lot is you have to learn how to build this business into your life because it's new. Like if you haven't worked from home or had a business before, you do need to get your butt at your desk on a regular basis. And you do have to do these things. So you have to figure out how that's going to work in your lifestyle now as well. So I'm like, you're learning all of the things at one time when you start a business, you're learning like how to run a business, how to do all the tech stuff, how to fit a business in your life, you know, all the marketing stuff. It's like you're a brand new baby, really, that it's just learning all this stuff. So we start at the very beginning and take baby steps, but we take definitive steps. I'm like, if you haven't started your Facebook page yet, I don't want to, I don't want to answer your questions about your lead magnet yet. Cause you're not there. <laughs> you're not there. I so love I'm kind it. of I love tough it. love that way. But I also know I, that, that's, you know, there's an order things have to happen. And if you're not willing to do this one, this one's not going to work anyhow. So that's right. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly right. 100. Yeah. I had somebody recently join, join my program, hadn't even taken the first lesson yet and posted in our Facebook group. God love her. She's interested in learning, but she's like, what are all the software programs I need to learn right now? And I'm going to go do that first. And I'm like, no, <laughs> that's not what is going to benefit you. Go back to the lessons and take them step by step. Because if you go learn a bunch of software programs now, number one, you're probably not going to need any of them that you're going to learn. And number two, the one, the few that you do need, you won't remember by the time you're ready to use them. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. 100%. So, and that's, I think that's a confidence thing, right? If I know all of this, it's back to what you said, I'm going to get all my ducks in a row and yeah. then I'll be ready. Yeah. I call it um, busy limbo land. I'm like, oh, I'll say to my audience, so I'm like, is this you? 
I'm going to take another course. <laughs> I'm going to learn another software. I'm going to do more brainstorming. I'm going to go in Canva and figure out a brand. You are doing everything possible to not do the one thing you need to be doing. And I Which say is? that with love because I've done it a bazillion times myself, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, it oh, we all have. confidence thing. Um, because I'm like, yes. as long as you're busy, as long as you're busy learning and busy doing this, you feel like you're doing something for your business when in fact you're not, you are procrastinating or what do they call yeah. it? Procrasta learning, procrasta learning, I've heard <laughs> that term. Yeah. That is so good. I love procrasta learning. Yeah. I, I know I go to procrasta learning and I'm an expert. Here's how I know when I am actually procrastinating. I go to procrasta learning and if I'm really into extreme procrastination, then I clean my refrigerator. That's the lowest I get. <laughs> then I know I've hit bottom and I have to analyze. Now I don't even clean the fridge. I just think, I think maybe I need to clean the refrigerator. And then I go, ding, ding, ding. What is it you really don't want to do? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's hysterical. That's hysterical. <laughs> yeah. So it is like, you just have to kind of face down your demons and go do the, the thing yeah. that you don't want to do, but yeah, take it step by step. And yeah, you have to take it step by step for sure. For sure. Well, yeah. I would tell you, I wish you were around when I first started my business because I love a step-by-step -step training. I love tough love. I love everything that you're talking about. So how do people get in touch with you if they're like me and go, I need to work with Colleen? Oh, easy. Come to my website, scrappyfrontier.com. Everything is there. You can get on my email list. You can get you know, my free resources, all of that. So scrappyfrontier.com. Uh, and you could also come to Facebook if you want my Facebook group, create your scrappy online business. So scrappyfrontier.com and create your scrappy business. That's how you find and me. And we will put, we will put all of those links in our show notes. Colleen, it has been wonderful talking with you today. Oh my gosh. Thanks for having me. I always have such a blast talking with you, especially because we have, you know, such the same audience, so much in common. I love it. Yeah, I love we it. really do. We really yeah. do. So thank you so much for being here and sharing all your brilliant insights. Super. Cheers. I appreciate it. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Dare to Leap. Say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There, you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share your feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then. Mm -hmm.